This is a Spitfire Mark 9. It has tail number MK356 and it is proudly flown at air displays throughout the season by the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. Of course, the Mark 9 needs no introduction for you guys who have been following the authentic its story for the last few years. Many of you are simulator fans who have been recreating Spitfire Mark 9 cockpits using Authenticate controls for use with either the DCS Spitfire or this version by Flying Iron Simulations for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It has been a fantastic journey watching Authenticate evolve and hearing how so many people have bought cheap 3D printers purely to make these controls and recreate an immersive Spitfire experience in their own home. But it's not enough just to have these controls to hand. If we're going to have the proper experience, they need to be in the right place as well. So that's what this video is going to help you achieve. Stay tuned. Some Authenticate Spitfire cockpits live in cupboards like this one and some take up an entire spare room. But I designed Authenticate so you can clamp the controls to any desk in about five minutes and take them down just as quickly. Here's my setup, which I often take down because I use this desk to make my assembly videos. Whatever setup you have, there's one thing I felt we still needed to get things just right. And that was a better set of measurements of where the controls should be relative to your flying seat or more likely office chair. If you think I'm getting a bit carried away here, well, I probably am a bit, but I'm also thinking about the next big development for virtual reality flight simulation, because surely that must be a reliable and effective solution for hand tracking. Here's my friend Mark from SimHanger testing out hand tracking in a business jet in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It kind of works, but it's still a bit clunky. I will include a link to his full video if you'd like to find out more, though I have to say that DCS seems further advanced than Microsoft in this area. Either way, the point I'm making is that fans of replica flight controls flying in VR are surely going to find it very frustrating seeing their hands reach out into the cockpit to grab, say, the flaps lever and then have to fumble around because the physical one is nowhere near. The Authenticate rig system is adjustable and it was designed to solve this problem, but we need the information to set it up right. I've had a few attempts doing this from drawings over the years, but I've always found it difficult to translate that information to my own office chair experience. So this week, with huge thanks to the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, I had the opportunity to climb inside MK356 while it was going through winter maintenance. I had my tape measure and I set about measuring everything I could think of that would be useful. I decided to do minimal ed editing on this video rather than present a simple set of numbers at the end as I thought you might find it useful to see for yourself where things were in relation to my legs. So if it drags a bit at times, that's the reason. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I'm sure I could have done it slightly better and could probably do a version two in the future if needed. So. After all that preamble, let's jump right in. Right, so here we are, we're back in the BBMF. What an amazing place it is. It's, it's winter engineering time here, so all the parts, all these machines, these gorgeous machines, have got their skins off. You can see these engines and magnificent bits of machinery. This is the Mark uh, 9, the NK356. So this is what the BBMF's simulator is based on. And what we're going to do now, fantastic opportunity, I'm going to climb inside because Everybody, you know, you guys might have built the throttle and the stick and the rudder, but then you're sitting in your simulator wondering where is, where should this be exactly? Where exactly should that throttle be? So I'm going to go in, take a bunch of measurements, share that with you so you can set things up exactly the way they need to be. So I'm getting inside now and uh, I've got my tape measure handy and we're going to take a few measurements. Okay. 
So I've got my buddy Neil from Creative Cockpits here who's going to read out a few questions to me and I'm going to take a few measurements. Right, so let's get start from the top. Okay, let's start uh, speed grip first. So we want the measurement from the tip of your knees. How far back is the column spade? Now, you have to bear in mind it, it, it's in the fully forward position. Yeah, we've got full down elevator at the moment there, Phil. Yeah, okay. Just uh, do that again. So that is neutral. Hold it there, that's neutral. Right, so set the spade grip to neutral. And I would say that it is now, I mean, one of the things is, is leg length as well. Um, I think I've probably got slightly longer legs than the average Spitfire pilot. Um, so take that into account, I'm six foot. Um, you might be slightly different, but on this, so where I am now, we're talking about just about five centimeters from the tip of my knees to the, to the spade. Five centimeters five forward, centimeters. forward from my knees. Okay, what else are we looking for? Is it worth doing a sort of knee to hip hinge measurement on your leg just to give us a, a rough yardstick there? Yeah, to find out so knee. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So from your, your, your hip so, hinge to your knee hinge. So I'm 50, about 55. 55 in, uh, 55 centimetres. Well, that's actually, that's from backside, you know, into the, into the seat. Okay. So that's going to yeah. be a reference, isn't it? Yeah. So it's more like actually where your more backside like touching, the, where your backside touches the seat to the front of your knee is fifty-seven centimeters. That's it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So you, What's next? Your next one. How far above is the top of the spade from the top of your knee? Now that's not going to vary much on people unless they're not a too much. No. A weight lifter. So that's about twin about nineteen centimeters. Nineteen centimeters. Okay. Throttle from the tip of your left knee, how far in front slash behind is the centre of the friction disc on the throttle? Right, why don't you move in? Yeah, because it'll help a lot to yeah. see this as well. And climb over, yeah. So, ready? Yeah. So we're talking the friction fr friction disc. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost bang on really. Pretty much the centre of, yeah. of your knee joint, isn't it? Yeah. So the friction disc is about the centre of the knee joint, yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you want to uh, add, so on the same one, how far above and below your knee is the centre of the friction disc? I would say we're down about 15, 12, 13 centimetres, it'd be about right. From the top of your knee? Uh, from the top, yeah. yeah. So the friction disc is about 13 centimetres yeah. down from the top. Okay. Yeah. And the... The gap between your leg and the throttle, so are we going for the friction disc centre as a datum? Yeah. Right, so can you read that better than me? Yeah, it's uh, 14 centimetres. Very good. Yeah, well, it depends how you move your leg a little bit. Yeah. Probably 12 to 14, something 12 like that. 12 to 14 centimetres. Yeah. Okay. And elevator trim. Okay, so the elevator trim. Well, let's do that relative to the throttle, I would say. Let's use that okay. as a reference, yeah? Yeah. In which case, the centre of the elevator trim to the centre of the friction on the throttle is about 19 centimetres back. 19 centimetres, and... I'd say the... And then the elevator trim centre relative to the friction disc is... Oh, you... It's, it's probably about only about three centimeters up. Three centimeters up, up. from the center of the throttle friction disc. So yeah, three centimeters higher than the center of the throttle yeah. friction disc. Actually, can you get that on the camera just yep. so it's people don't get confused? Yep. We've got that there. Yeah. Three centimeters higher. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And how how far above your knee is the center of the elevator trim wheel? Um, or, or the bit of leg that's in line with it. Yeah. So well, let's, we've done that relative to the. Oh yeah, well that's yeah, so that's fine. You've got yeah, that's problem. that's it's a hard well measurement there. Otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. How much gap between your leg and the trim wheel? Right. Yeah. So you're talking. Can you see that one to the centre of the disc? That is. What would you say? Yeah. I'm going for 18 centimetres. Okay. That's good. And rudder bias. Yeah. Again, let's do that. Do it from my leg. That is 
Can you see that? Yeah, I'm going to say, because you've got a bit of a bend in the tape, I'm just guessing that 15, 15. centimetres. All right. And then in terms of that being below, well, that's back yeah. from the, I'll do this relative to the I think you want to go, you want to go see, oh yeah, you could do, yeah, yeah. So from between the centres is about 17. Centre to centre, 17 centimetres. And then below, so the rudder trim bias below the elevator trim is about six, about eight centimetres. Eight centimetres. Seven or okay. eight, yeah. Chassis lever. Chassis lever, okay. I won't necessarily do it in the order. You can tell me if I miss anything. But the it's we're only talking about about, four, about, about nine, eight to nine centimeters. On the side of your yeah, four, well it's it's gonna vary a bit on your legs, but if you've got that if you've got that about eight centimeters to the right, that's where you where you're gonna have it. And it is right the center of it is pretty much bang in line with the end of my knee. Slightly Maybe slightly back by like five centimeters. Okay. Um, oh, and below, I think the below thing as well. So it's below my knee by uh, below my knee by about 14 centimeters. Okay. Do you want to take a quick reference uh, from the center of that to the instrument panel or the, the frame? From, all right. Yeah, so, just so, a quick check yeah. on that one. So to the instrument panel, we're talking about 24, 24 centimetres. 24 centimetres. And uh, yeah, you've done the let, the gap between the leg and the drum, and yeah, I think we're good there. Uh, instrument panel. Right. From the tip of your knees. Right. Okay. So that is about 20, 17 centimetres. 17. Yeah. And how far above is the bottom of the blind flying panel? It's actually below my knee. Yeah. I'm talking a bit of a guess on about all of this, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, this is definitely a leg leg here. I would think, yeah. uh, you know, my knees are running quite high, I think. What might be worth doing is once once you've got all your measurements, if you get me to jump in, yeah. it's pro I'm probably the extreme. Uh, if, if you go from your femur length, I'm probably the, you what, the opposite I, extreme to you. If I go full right rudder, yeah. that also makes a, that probably makes it a bit comparable. Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. So, um, what we measure in height, yeah. So it's a fraction below, about three centimetres below, I'd say. But you can, you can check with you later. Two, three yeah. centimetres below, yeah. Okay. Okay, and flap lever. Flap lever, right? Okay, that's oh, it's way up there, isn't it? It's probably higher than I've been putting it. So what? I'm going to do it relative to the spade grip. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're going to go neutral elevator actually, no, again? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it to the instrument panel. We've got a reference on that. Okay. We? Yeah. So from the bottom of the instrument panel, we're talking the center of it. We're talking 37 centimeters. Okay, and. How far left? From the middle. The centre of the panel. Yeah. Okay. 19 centimetres. Okay. And... Right. So the next thing, you've asked what's the feel like. Now, we don't want to operate that because it's, it's hydraulics. We need to speak to Dan before we do that. Yeah, actually. So... Ask him if I can turn the flat. Dan! Can I move the flat lever? Go. There you go. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Start a booster. How yep. far from the tip of your right knee? Okay, let me put my knee down a little bit. So, we're talking. Well, I suppose it's the instrument panel, isn't it? It is really, so it's yeah. the same as that. Yeah. Okay. And how far above below your knees? It's about in line with the top, isn't it, really? There's not much difference. Yeah, yeah but the centre of it's just three centimetres up from the bottom of the instrument panel. Primer? Um, Left and right though, have we done that bit? So it's um, just fractionally left. The yeah. centre of the booster and the starter is about five centimetres left of my right knee. Left, right. Okay. And primer? Primer is... That's it's quite close a, to your knee, isn't it? <laughs> right of it, yeah. yeah. So it's... Um, we're talking about seven, six or seven centimetres to the right. Okay. 
and it is and to the bottom corner of the instrument panel left and right um let's do well, let's do it from the middle center yeah you've got a definite center there 20, uh, yeah, that knob there is pretty central, yeah, so we're talking... Just think if you went from the edge as well, you give you a... Yeah, I'll do both, yeah. yeah. 13, 23 from the middle, yep. and um, 20 to the right, no, 19 to the right, 19 okay. to the right, 23 um, to the middle. The next thing is, what does it feel like, movement action? Right. That's uh, another one for Dan. Yeah. Uh, Dan, can I move the primer? So the primer action. Oh yeah, okay, that is quite... But it would feel different with fuel as well, I suppose. It would, yeah. Yeah. So there's a, a little bit of turn resistance on that. How and, far to lock? And then the... In degrees, full, roughly? Full back. Um, does it... Is it just fully rotating, is it? Is, is there I, any thought there was, I thought there was a lock position. So you shouldn't build a ah, right. lock. Yeah. yeah, so it's locked on. I don't know, quite a few turns. It's a screw thread, isn't it? Oh, is it? Right, okay. Yeah, it looks like a screw it's thread. It's a very coarse screw thread. Coarse screw yeah. thread. I'll just get in on that a bit more. Yeah. You want to operate that again? Yeah, very yeah, coarse thread. Yeah. yeah. That'd be nice to model that, actually. Yeah. Very nice It'd be to quite model easy that. to model, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then, yeah, so full, fully back on the primer. Um, so from that reference point there, we're talking Oh, the, the coat has calmed down a little bit. Right, yeah. we're up nine centimeters, and when it's all right in, it's like three centimeters. So then back and then, about and then six screwed, centimeters. yeah. When it's screwed, you get about another, another centimeter, centimeter door, yeah. 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 Okay, brilliant. Right. Every day is a skill day. Yeah. Let's try the fuel. Let's try the fuel lever. Oh, uh, wobble wait, pump. Yeah. Wobble pump. So, uh, is that wobble pump? Sorry, is that wobble pump? Uh, that's not connected, so you can play with that as much as you want. We fuel don't cock it. as well. Fuel cock. No, because obviously there may be a rigid job bit of fuel in there. I might be dropping it, right. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you. So, wobble pump. Wobble pump. So, position. How far from the tip of your right knee? Let me put my knee down again. So, to the, to the hinge. That's a typhoon. Typhoons. typhoons. <laughs> let's let the typhoon go. Right, let's grab our moment. <laughs> gone a little bit quiet but, oh that's a relief right so about 20 centimeters up from my knee to the hinge point of the wobble pump yeah and then back it is oh, five centimeters or so okay. and to the side about 12 ish so we're talking about 12 to the right 20 up about four or five back and then the feel of the wobble pump is Oh, it's not a lot of movement. Not a lot of travel, is there? No. no, not a lot of travel. Is that a hard stop on the back? I can see it's a hard stop forwards. Yeah, it hits, it, it yeah. hits a plate. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's not a lot of wobble action. It's probably enough, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That is it, according to your list. Wow. Let's just yeah. get a measurement on the fuel um, fuel lever there. So that is... Where's that? Well, I can't see that. Yeah, just to the right of the spade Oh, yeah, there. got you. Yeah. So the centre... Of that one. Well, that plate unit is. What sort of height is that little plate? So, the height of that plate is about 11, 12 centimeters. The center of it, where it says fuel, to the bottom of the instrument panel is about 10 centimeters. Okay. From fuel the. Fuel, where, where the word fuel is at the bottom of the uh, instrument panel. Uh, yeah, that's the one, that's the 10. And then from the center of the instrument panel to the center of that, that unit, you're talking about nine centimeters. And if, just to double check, well, the, the distance to my knee is the same as the instrument panel. Yeah. That, that's in line with the instrument panel. Yeah. I think, I think one thing you can't capture on this, Phil, it's the smell. Oh, the smell's magic, isn't the, it? The smell is beautiful. Uh, it's the real deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all your measurements. Nice and graceful now, Phil. A graceful dismount. Leap down with a flourish. <laughs> We're done. What an opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> if you're still with me, thank you. <laughs> Certainly not perfect, but hopefully helpful. I actually had a panic this morning when I was about to edit this video. I thought it might all be invalid because I wasn't wearing a parachute, which you basically sit on. So, I exchanged a few WhatsApps with the BBMF guys, and fortunately they reassured me that the cushion I was sitting on 
has comparable thickness to the parachute seat, as shown here. Of course, the seat is also fully adjustable, as is the seating position in the simulator, so I think this was all still useful. If you're following Authenticate on Facebook, Twitter or Discord, I will probably summarize all these measurements in a few useful diagrams. But even for myself, I can imagine referring back to this video just to remind myself exactly how the controls were positioned relative to my seated position. I hope you find it similarly useful, and if you did, stay tuned and subscribe as I plan to make more of these videos. In fact, I already have a second one in the editing room. So for now, folks, goodbye. I'll catch you again soon.